Hello and welcome to Quarantine Athlete, where we discuss how to stay in the game and push through these extraordinary times together. My name is Martise Moore, former USC hurdler turned performance and confidence coach. And today I'd like to introduce the current indoor 200 meter NCAA record holder with a 22.38, that's super fast, <laughs> uh, and professional track and field athlete for New Balance. Miss Gabby Thomas. Hi, Gabby. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for having me on. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, originally from Atlanta, Georgia, Gabby broke multiple school and Ivy League sprint records while she competed for Harvard University, <laughs> all while majoring in a super easy field of study, neurobiology. <laughs> all right. So thanks for, so much for joining us today, Gabby. All right, so let's just jump right in. You know, before all this physical distancing and stay at home orders, what were you doing? What were you training for? Yeah, so I had actually just moved to Austin, Texas. I uprooted my life to join a new training group to train for the Olympics in 2020. Uh Yeah. Wow. And how was that going? So it was actually going really well. Um, I was really excited to join a new training group full of, you know, already Olympians and world champions. And, you know, my coach is a prior Olympian. Um, So it was really good to have a training group where I could really push myself and and see what I could do with my potential. So Mm -hmm. I was really excited about the Olympics. It was looking really, really promising, like a really good season. Yeah. Yeah. Such a bummer. (laughs) Okay. But that's why I'm so glad that you're joining us today because a lot of us Kind of, well, not to that degree, but can understand the disappointment Mm -hmm. of the sports season being canceled. And, you know, you were all hyped to prepare for a big season and it kind of just ends so (laughs) unexpectedly. So Uh, how did you react when you heard that sports were being canceled across the board? Yeah. um, I mean, the training group as a whole, I think we were kind of prepared for it. You know, they had first canceled the world indoor championships were supposed to be in China and they had Uh canceled that because of the coronavirus. So we were kind of just watching everything slowly shut down. And I just remember where we were, we were all at practice at training. Uh And when we got the news, you know, someone read it off their email on their phone. Uh Um, And initially you're just shocked. You're like, okay, well, what do we do? You know, we've been training. What do we do with our training? You know, so the coach, you know, our coach was a little bit stressed. Obviously she was really upset. We were all a little upset. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also, we didn't know whether it's being postponed or canceled, you know, upon the first news that we heard. So we were really just praying that the Olympics weren't canceled. Mm -hmm. Um, and so to find out that they were postponed just one year was kind of a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And so how are you feeling about it now? Like, are you, you're in a good place? (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's... (laughs) It's definitely kind of frustrating. I mean, right now we're just, we're training Mm -hmm. and we don't really know what we're training for. So that takes like a whole, a new kind of mindset and different mentality that you have to like kind of tap into to stay motivated. Um, But I mean, I think we've all just kind of accepted it and this Mm -hmm. is, you know, our job and everyone in the world is dealing with it. So, you know, globally we're all in this together. Um, So I just kind of have to look at it like that. But yeah, initially it was very disappointing. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are you doing to, I know you're still training with your team. How are you staying mentally sharp? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, really to do that, it just takes a lot of kind of positive mindset and mm-hmm. mental resilience and just honestly, just keeping faith that there will be competition mm-hmm. um, at some point this year. Yeah. And I think we're really good at keeping each other motivated, you know, so mentally, I mean, we both, we all go out there on the track and uh-huh. we still put our all into it. We keep the intensity up mm-hmm. um, and we just kind of try to motivate each other mentally. So, well, how does that work with physically <laughs> distanced practice? How does that work? Yeah, unfortunately. So we have to practice in small groups now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's originally eight of us, so we split it up four and four. Uh-huh. Um, or we try to, you know, people are walking on the parks and walking on the track, so we try yeah. to respect social distancing and stay yeah. out of everyone's way, stay out of mm-hmm. each other's way. Um, we have been kicked off track, so we're going on our fourth track right now. Yeah, because <laughs> they're trying all to get some training in here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, Texas is opening back up. Um, okay, I think tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes. But mm-hmm. yeah, we've just been trying to be very careful and. Yeah, probably should still yeah. be careful, even yeah. if you guys open back up. <laughs> exactly. Yes, <laughs> it's a little concerning, but <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay. Uh, that's so interesting though. Cause, um, are you guys training at like different times now? Is it like mm -hmm. different blocks instead of everybody at once? Yeah, it's kind of sad. I do miss, um, a lot of the girls when we have to train separately, but yeah, we have mm -hmm. different time blocks and they are an hour and a half apart just to ensure that we don't overlap and there aren't too many people in uh -huh. one area. Cause if we get together, you know, we'll just come together and start talking and, you know, forget. So yeah, we try <laughs> to keep the timing, you know, it's a, it's a harder for our coach cause she has to be out there all day, you know, making yeah. sure that each group is seen. Um, uh -huh. And typically it'll be like, you know, long sprinters are in one group, short sprinters in the other. Yeah. Um, so she'll kind of put me in either or since I'm a 200 girl. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's only four of us, so it's a little sad, but I mm -hmm. mean, it's just part of the social distancing. So yeah. Um, I'm just curious cause obviously no one else has been through this before. This is extraordinary times, <laughs> but I, you said, you mentioned that you have some people who've been to the Olympics before or definitely have been to Olympic trials before. Yeah. Actually, you been to the Olympic trials before yeah <laughs> uh, so uh, does this in any way compare to you know their experiences with the Olympics in the past you know maybe they got injured or something like that and had to miss or um for the Olympics no they all I mean they all went to Olympic trials in 2016 and, and they did mm -hmm. very very well um I think part of that is also I mean it's a little more heartbreaking for those of us who joined the group who haven't had their chance to make the Olympic team yet, yeah. you know, because we are really banking on it this year. Yeah. Um, but after that, I mean, it's a very resilient group, you know, Morla Kay Kinnison, she actually tore her Achilles. Mm. Um, I think it was 2017 and she had to sit out a year and then come back and, you know, work from there. So it's a pretty mentally resilient group. So mm -hmm. it's nice to be around that. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's just you know, when you just are so excited for 2020 and making the sure. Olympic team, it's it's a little bit different for those who haven't been yet. But. Yeah, well, you know, you'll be there next year. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So are there any positives that have come out of all of this? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to think about that um, like now, but I'm sure in retrospect, it'll be easy. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think, um, you know, it's just, we had to tap into a different type of mental resilience, which I mm -hmm. think is something that's very, very good for you know our line of work. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we're just, it's kind of forcing us to fall in love with the process all over again yeah. and kind of just remember why we're out there and what we're doing. Um, you know, cause we, we still love what we do and it's important to just take a step back and realize, you know, this is what we're doing. You know, we, we're pretty grateful for what we're able to do um, despite everything. So I, I do think mentally mindset, you know, it's really pushed us to kind of be, remain focused, mm -hmm. remain motivated, remain disciplined despite everything. So I think there's a lot to be gained from that. Yeah. Well, that's good advice uh, for the other athletes out there. In fact, you were a assistant coach at Harvard your last year oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, what would you have said to the group when their season got canceled? Yeah, I mean, I, I still talk to the girls now. Um, uh -huh. They're still close friends of mine. So, I mean, I just, I, a lot of, um, a lot of it I did encourage them to use their eligibility elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But really, it just comes down to, you know, you, you did everything you could. You put it all out there. And this right. is something that was out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's, it's very hard to comfort something like that, especially a senior. Sure. Um, but other years, you know, you still have time. You know, mm -hmm. just use yeah. that as fuel, fuel and fire. Uh -huh. But for seniors, yeah, it, it is a lot harder. But you know, there, there was nothing they could do about it. So I think you just have to kind of stay positive and, and work with what you were able to have and what you were blessed with, which was the opportunity to compete. Mm -hmm. So Okay. So for all of us non-Olympians out there, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still, you know, out there doing it, playing our sports, <laughs> what is like the takeaway advice you would give to all the athletes out there right now going through all of this together? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, we, yeah, like you said, we're all in this together. Um, so that's first and foremost, remember that. But also just let this be an opportunity to learn, to gain, you know, some positive, like mindset, positive resilience, um, and just just use it as fuel, you know, mm -hmm. for, for when you're able to get back out there and, and do what you love. And just, you know, use this time to remember why you love what you do. Wonderful advice. That's perfect. So <laughs> how can we continue to follow your journey? Because that's pretty <laughs> exciting, you know, um, yes. going to the Olympics and the fact that you legitimately could go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know, like, I, you know, when you broke the record, I don't think up until that point you were really cons- thinking that it was possible. But after that, you yeah. know, it's so like real now. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, everything happened very quickly. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, though. Uh, it's very inspiring, especially for a lot of, <laughs> you know, uh, athletes who want to run in college or potentially, you know, even that next level after that. So where can we follow your journey? <laughs> well, um, I, I update my Instagram a lot. I'm working on a website right now, which I will post. Okay. Um, yeah. But, What's your handle? Um, my, my Instagram handle yeah. is at Gabby Thomas. Okay. Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a Twitter. It's Gabrielle T. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we actually have a training group, Instagram, that mm-hmm. we, you know, we post all of our progress and updates. It's called um, TBBTC. <laughs> Tan, yeah, Tanja Buford Bailey Track Club. Oh, TBBTC. wow. TBBTC. Yeah, right. that's our coach. So that's our track club name. You uh-huh. can follow us in the whole training group there. Um, we post a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll definitely put put all that underneath the video, and uh, make sure we we follow Gabrielle T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess that's pretty much it. So that's it for today's episode of Quarantine Athlete. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Green Runner LA and on YouTube, and tell us about your quarantine athlete experiences. We'd love to hear about what you're doing during these extraordinary times. And until next time, please stay safe and be well. And remember that we all are in this together.